probabilities are assigned values from 0 to 1. Events that are certain to occur are assigned probabilities of 1, while events that are impossible to occur are assigned probabilities of 0 or 0%. Zero For example, the probability that a given individual will eventually die is 1. That event is certain to occur. Well, the probability that tomorrow it will rain money is equal to zero because that event is impossible to occur. Events that has 50-50 chance has a probability of 50% or one half. Now, the closer the probability of a given event is equal to one, the more likely the event will occur. While the closer the probability of the given event is equal to zero, the less likely the event will occur. Suppose you toss a coin. Although it is equally likely to land either heads up or tails up, the actual outcome is uncertain. Any occurrence for which the outcome is uncertain is called an experiment. So thus, tossing a coin is an example of an experiment. The set of all possible outcomes of an experiment is called the sample space, and we denote that by capital letter S. Any subset of a sample space is called an event, and it is denoted by letter E. For example, the sample space for the coin tossing experiment is S, which is equal to HT, where H is the event for heads up outcome and T is for the event that leads tails up. Now the subset E, which would probably be the subset containing H, is the event of landing heads up when the coin is tossed. If you sum up all the theoretical probabilities of all the possible outcomes, it should be equal to 1. To calculate the theoretical probability of an event, we divide the number of outcomes resulting in the event by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. The theoretical probability of event E, denoted by P of E, is calculated as the number of outcomes in event E divided by the number of possible outcomes from the sample space. To illustrate this, we will consider the following example. A die is rolled once. Find the probability of rolling a 3 and rolling an even number. To answer this, we will first have to compute for the sample space S of rolling a die once. The sample space S gives us all the possible outcomes. So when you roll a die, you either get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All in all, if you get the total possible outcomes from the sample space, that is equal to 6. To get the probability of rolling a 3, find the number of outcomes that result in 3. There is only one way to roll a 3, so therefore n of e is equal to 1. Using the formula for the theoretical probability, the probability of rolling a 3, denoted by p of 3, is equal to the number of outcomes that result in 3 divided by the total number of possible outcomes. That is equal to 1 over 6. 6 is the total possible outcomes. Now for the next event, rolling an even number, rolling an even number describes the event E, which is equal to 2, 4, and 6. These are all the even numbers. This event can occur in three ways. Therefore, N of E is equal to 3. 
So therefore, the probability of getting an even number is equal to the number of outcomes that result in even number, and that is equal to 3, divided by the total number of possible outcomes, which is equal to 6. So 3 divided by 6 is equal to 1 half. You dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck. Find the probability of being dealt a king and b a heart. We follow the formula for theoretical probability, and that is just equal to the number of king outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. In the standard deck of cards, there are a total of 52 cards. So the denominator is equal to 52, that is the total possible outcomes. In a standard deck of cards, there are four different kings. So the number of kings outcomes is equal to 4. So the probability of getting a king is equal to 4 over 52, which can be reduced as 1 over 13. Next, find the probability of being dealt a heart. This is equal to the number of heart outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. Now, the number of heart outcomes is equal to 13. There are 13 hearts in a standard deck of cards. And the total possible outcomes is equal to 52, since there are 52 cards in a standard deck of cards. 13 over 52 in lowest term is equal to 1 fourth. For empirical probability, this applies to situations in which we observe how frequently an event occurs. We use the following formula to compute for the empirical probability of an event. The empirical probability of an event E is computed as the quotient of the observed number of times E occurs and the total number of observed occurrences. So to illustrate computing empirical probability, let us consider this table here. If one person is randomly selected from the population described above, find the probability that the person is female. To compute for the probability that a person is female, we use the formula for empirical probability. We get the total number of females observed divided by the total number of adults in the survey. Based on the table here, the total number of females is equal to 124. Well, the total number of adults in the survey is equal to 242. So therefore, the probability that the person is female is just equal to 124 divided by 242, which is approximately equal to 0.51.